This is a D6 Generation Pep, bite-sized content for a busy gamer. Sometimes featuring Craig, sometimes featuring Russ. Hey, what about me? Oh yeah, and sometimes featuring Rafe, ah, uh, Hollywood Granger. Everyone, welcome back to another D6G Pip. This time around, uh, it's part two of the Grim Dark Dungeon Master interview that I did with Rafe. Um, I did want to kind of set a couple things up though before we jump in here. Um, one, we have got a launch date locked down now over on GameFound. So if you want to check all this out, uh, head on over to GameFound and you can type in Grim Dark. Uh, Dungeon Master, Catacombs of the Necromancer. All you get to type in is Grim Dark, and I think we're going to pop up. I think we're number one under that. <laughs> and um, if you look us up, you'll notice that we got a lot of great information in there, a lot of great imagery of a lot of the things that Rafe and I talked about on the episode today. So in today's part two, you're going to hear Rafe comment on the components, um, as well as his thoughts after his first play session. So if you're interested in what some of this stuff looks like, you can head over to GameFound, uh, look up Grim Dark Dungeon Master there, and you can see all that stuff. Um, also, GrimDarkGames.net will also take take you right there. Also, we we have previewed a couple of new things on there that might be interesting to you. So, uh, when interviewing Rafe, um, he was only allowed. I did actually was could could show him some of these other things I'm about to share with you. He was only allowed to talk about the core heroes that come in the game, which of course is the uh, the dwarven um, berserker, the uh, human templar, and the elven mage. But we've announced on our uh, GameFound page that there's going to be an expansion called the Order of the Phoenix, which is going to include three female heroes, a female cleric. She's my favorite art in the game. I tweeted about this the other day. I love, I mean, I love all the art in the game, but I just love the look of her. Um, she looks so stoic and strong with her giant, like it's got this giant mace staff situation that is just awesome. Um, but then also um, we've got a female um, sorceress uh, coming from like an, an Asian vibe, really cool uh, look and feel to her. She's fantastic. Uh, powered by the elements, which is cool, or she harnesses the elements or there's elements going on. Uh, and then the third um, is a uh, a gnome rogue, basically. So we got a rogue, a cleric, and a sorceress all coming in in, this exp in that expansion as well, which is super exciting. So that's been announced, as well as some other expansions will include new bosses. So in the core game, the main bad guy is a necromancer. Uh, but in one of the expansions, we've revealed on the GameFound page that there'll be a new villain, a vampire, who will have two forms, his sort of native human-looking form, but his true form looks like some kind of um, just big sort of winged Va uh, vampire sort of super monster vampire thing, which is just hard to describe. You got to go check it out. So, uh, so thanks for um, checking that. If you do, and I really appreciate it. We've been getting some great feedback on this, so I appreciate you guys um, all giving me the feedback on this sort of stuff. It's been interesting because we're experimenting. Obviously, got to figure out how to promote this game, and um, which is sort of fun. And so we've been experimenting in different spaces that I don't normally do. We did a TikTok video the other day. My daughter, I didn't know how to do a TikTok video. I've never even had the TikTok app. Um, and of course, you know, I, I, as you guys know my history, I, I've done the DACADACA.com, the D6 generation. So I kind of know how to get information out, but I never done TikTok and anything else to, 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 for the younger generation air quotes. So this is sort of an interesting experience, but she was great at, at teaching me the basics of TikTok and how to use it. Um, and the TikTok video was actually kind of fun to do. I'm not going to lie. I really was hesitant going into that. So if you want to see that craziness, um, I posted a link to it on the Twitter feed, but of course you're on TikTok. Just look for Grim Dark Games. You'll find that there as well. Um, that's just silly. But also what's been sort of interesting is getting ready for the Game Found campaign to launch. We've had a lot of guests on this show in the past, and they all talk about how much work a crowdfunding campaign is and how much effort it takes to do it. And, you know, when you listen to that, you think, of course, it's a lot of work. You know, I got it. But then when you go to do it, it's a lot of work. There's so many little steps you got to go through. And, um, and it's, it's, it's all the order of getting everything right. Cause you're, you know, you, you put so much effort in this. You want to make sure you, you put your best foot forward and, and everybody's excited about it. And all the whole team's excited about a course. And you're hoping that, that people are going to get excited about it. And we've been getting great feedback at the Nova open and from other, other folks who've seen it and started looking at it. And we're like, man, 
Um, we think we got something here, but how do we, you know, how do we not screw up the launch? How do we get this right? And so we're thinking about all the different things we could be doing in terms of stretch goals and promotion and just getting the page as good as you can. And so you're always looking it over and second guessing it and everything else. But we've we've nailed down our launch date. We're going to go live. The game fund's going to go live on October 8th. Uh, you can go there now and founding f- follow it. So one of the things that's kind of cool about Game Found that's a little different than Kickstarter is you can get involved with the campaign before it goes live. So we can preview it, but you can actually already interact with it before it's live. You can ask questions, you can follow the campaign, get updates on it. But we are going to launch on October 8th. Um, and we're going to run through, uh, we haven't decided on our end date yet exactly, but it's looking like early November. So that's going to be the great time to jump in and check it out. And we will have tons of updates coming out of that. So we're, we've got the stretch goals all nailed down. We're just finalizing those right now. And, um, we're really excited to preview a bunch of other stuff going on throughout the course of the campaign. So that's going to be a lot of fun too. So I just can't wait for you guys all to see this stuff and give me the feedback because, uh, you know, um, it's just really interesting to hear from folks. Um, you know, you put the stuff out there and you kind of hope people like it. Um, but we're, we're really curious about that. Um, but yeah, without further ado though, I want to hand you guys back off to to Rafe. And what you're going to hear from, from Rafe and I talk about a bit here is a couple things. One, we're going to talk about, um, you know, what he thought about the components when we got to see them. So he had production quality components in front of him, the actual components that we're going to produce for people who back the, the game found. So the actual uh, clear acrylics, the actual neoprene mats for the heroes, uh, the actual uh, tiles that we're going to get for the dungeon, all that stuff with actual art. He saw all of that. Um, and so you'll hear his thoughts on all of that. Um, I was able to preview also a few of the miniatures to him um, because uh, I think as you, as I mentioned on the last show, there are, there is going to be a miniature version uh, that you can, a uh, uh, a pledge goal level where you can actually get uh, miniatures for the game to replace the acrylics if you'd like. Um, and one of the things that was a bit tricky, I don't know if we talked about this with Rafe, but I was very passionate about making sure there were icons on the bases of the model. So the, 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 the bases of the acrylics is also clear acrylic. So you see through the bases, which is cool because there's really cool art on the dungeon tiles. And there's also some rules in the dungeon tiles. So you want to be able to see through the bases, but I also wanted the bases to have iconography on them. So you could see the stats of all the different minions that the, that the Grimdark Dungeon Master can control as they're running on the dungeon. So I always wanted to be, you could look at the board and see the rules, right? And so uh, we knew how to do that on the acrylics because you could you screen it on the acrylics just so you can screen color. Um, and when it came to the miniatures, I really wanted to do the bases as well. So one of the things we put a lot of thought into is could we um, assemble the miniatures on clear acrylics so the miniatures are standing on a clear acrylic even though they're, you know, solid miniatures like the type you'd see when you any kind of miniature you'd expect but they're right on the acrylic stand and the acrylic stand has the same screening on it that the uh, regular acrylic figures have so the miniatures are on stands with their stats on them as well which is kind of neat and the stands are normal sizes the the stats are just a a series of icon blocks maybe three or four icons um and they're big enough you can see them from pretty far away but um but i was really pleased with how those came out as well and and that's one of the things um i think you hear this with with rafe and i talking about it is uh, i'm just blown away by uh, our artists, our, our production folks, um, everybody in the background making this stuff work. Um, it really takes a village. And so um, I'm really pleased with how that came out. So hopefully you hear that with Rafe as well. So I think that's the biggest parts of the updates I have. The other big thing has been uh, when you hear me talk to Rafe, I talk about the fact that we didn't start with a rule book. I actually started with quick reference cards because I wanted to be able to iterate rapidly on the rule book, you know, so as the rules change and evolve, then have to rewrite the whole rule book. I could just update the quick reference cards. Um, and that was sort of interesting because we had to live by quick reference cards, um, and which was, which really made the rules be concise as concise as we could. Uh, but now I've gone through the process of actually writing the rule book and what was that an experience? So the rule book is being done is just done now and now we're, it's an editorial review. So I'm hopeful that when the campaign launches, we can put the rule book up there. So you guys can check that out too. At least the, the rules pages of the rule book, we're still working on the, on the, on the fiction background and the, what we call the fluff, right? The fluff that's going to be in the rule book along with some of the cool art that's going to be in the rule book. But in terms of the actual rules and the rules layout, I think we're, we're getting pretty close on that. So I'm looking forward to sharing all that with you as well. So uh, it does really feel like this thing's coming together. We're very excited about it. Um, and so uh, I got to stop blathering on. I'm just going to head things over to Rafe now um, and the rest of the Rafe interview. And you'll hear again his commentary on the components as well as what he thought of the game. Well, let me show you a few components now then before you see the game to see if that makes you more want to play it. Or you're like, well, now that I've seen the components, I'm a nine or an eight. Okay. So what I'm hopeful is you say now I'm a 10 plus after seeing the components. Okay. So would you like to see the original prototype or do you want to go right no. to the actual? Okay. Right to the actual. Okay. This is more like a convention then. Okay. So... 
This is what's going now. I, I do want to see the original, but I want to see the okay. So we'll talk about the, that. The, the, the polished, and cool. then we can look like the creation. All right. So let me show you now like again. The scenes. I have this all laid out inside of a uh, an old gaming box that yep. I had lying around in my my yep. basement. So yep. the, the box is not finished yet. Although okay. I can show you the box art later. Okay. Let me show you what comes in the game. Uh, and again, don't get too hung up on the uh, on the stuff. So the first thing you're going to notice when you open the box is Ooh. the um, the actual full oh. color acrylics. Those are cool. So if you're not a miniature gamer. But you want to have full color. There is the Barbarian Dwarf. And Ray, why don't you it. describe what you're looking at there? Okay, yeah. So we've got some acrylic, which is clear. Really thick, not wobbly, well put together. And some really fantastic dwarf art. Yep. Which and is two-sided. And they're all to scale. So you'll notice the human Templar oh. is taller than the dwarf. And, and this may be a small but dumb detail, but one I really, really like. The front of the dwarf is the front, and the back of the dwarf is the back of the dwarf yes. not the front of the dwarf again and if you run your finger over this acrylic the art is inside the oh, acrylic on yeah, both sides not you a can't sticker. scratch the art off by accident wow that's slick uh, and it is as Rafe mentioned it's about a quarter inch thick it's nice and thick so it um, it won't break and so Rafe is looking at the three heroes now yep. the Templar the dwarf and the elf and you'll notice that while they're all um, acrylic stand ups they're on like little bases and they're standing up in three dimensions yep um, they are all the right scale. So the, the dwarf is shorter, is shorter than the human, and there's the elf there too. Okay, scale. All right. All right. So now, let me show you those mats. I can't show you this one, because that one's super secret. Okay, not looking and at super secret cat. Mats. See super secret number two, also super secret. Okay, not seeing super secret number two. And what is this one? I, I know how to respond Here you go. to that, that's for sure. This is the dwarf. You tell me how this feels. Woo! So Rafe is looking at a neoprene Schnazzy. mat now. What's your reaction to this, Rafe? Really good, really cool. So again, good thickness. The art on it is fantastic. Are we able to say who the artist is, or uh, just part of the production? We'll just call him part of the production crew now. We'll okay. reveal the artist later. I will say our artist. You tell me what level of art that looks like. Like, what is that rival games you've seen before? Triple A plus. Yeah, it's fantastic. So uh, um, you know, I you you would see this in a D and D book or or any published game. Yeah, I, I couldn't be more proud of how and, and impressed and blown away by our artist this guy is insane he's awesome um and i he's gonna i think he's gonna take the gaming world by storm um and so what you're looking at rafe is a is a neoprene mat that's pretty long and yeah wide right yeah, I mean, it's, it's nice it's it's thin you can, meaning read, you can read the words and you can see it's designed to hold six playing cards right yep. basically playing size cards and slots yep um and remember i told you there's a special ability in the four slot there is a special ability there okay and there's a little bit of fluff about the dwarf up here in the corner you can okay read about lord grimmel rickson yeah. lord grimmel rickson death stalker yep battle death in battle is no glory to stand upon a pile of enemies each with a cursed skull from my hammer then to tavern for the night of feasting and drinking. Nice. And then to the bedroom <laughs> to fall asleep like a newborn babe beneath a pile of beautiful women. <laughs> Love it. And here's here's the here's the uh, what do you think of the art for the mage there? Fantastic. Um, look at the neoprene out of the mage. Wow, really good. Another secret one. So Rafe's seeing that I do have three other heroes here that are playable, but I, I can't reveal them yet. Okay. And then here is I respect the, that. Here's the Templar. What do you think of the Templar's art? Ooh, nice. Ooh, I like it. I like how the Templar has a grisly battled look. Not, yeah, he's an not old the, veteran look. Gray yeah, beard, yeah, the battle look. scars all over it. His yeah. shield and his armor is all dented, but he still looks like noble and powerful. Right? Really good. I love this art. All right. So I that the is the... So what you're looking at there, those are the hero mats, which I think are the mo one of the most... This wow. plus these guys are one of the most impressive components. That's snazzy. You got some quick reference cards here. These are all those. You oh, got some on. more quick reference cards here. Those. Okay. Yep. Yeah, really nice. Good. Here's a setup stock. quick reference card. And then here is... So back to the Archmage. Here are the here are the cards that go with the Archmage. So if you look on this side, it shows these are the different ability cards you can play, and you can see there's the when played and the persistent effect. Hand me the dwarf ones. All right, I'm gonna want find the mage. He's already. <laughs> I don't want no stinking mage. I want stinking this one's mage. secret. This is here. He is, and you can see on the back of the cards they have the character's logo. Each character has a unique logo. Oh, and, then oh, you, yeah. and you'll notice it's on the mats too. And if you flip it over. You'll see all the abilities of the dwarf. You can read a couple out loud if you want there. And describe the cards. What are you looking at there, Reef? Well, we got a nice, nice, good card, like you'd expect in a in a quality top end game. Good color, nice art. Um, I'm flipping them over, and then I'm trying to be like, okay, there's all sorts of iconography. 
Um, but there's really cool art in the center picture, which I like. So, so let me just, okay, here's a dwarf. Here's a dwarf axe. And this is called Axe Whirlwind. And then it has some flavor text to it. You didn't need that limb, did you? That's a good one. <laughs> okay, and then it says when played. Oh, okay, it has a when play action. Um, attack all minions on your tile and adjacent tiles. That's pretty powerful. Purge all tiled cleared of minions. Ooh, that's fun. Okay, and then my persistent effect for this card. Does it matter what slot it goes into? Well, you into? always put them from the left and touch on the bottom. You always put them from left to right. So you always start them in the left. Because basically, when you when you cover the fourth slot is when you lose that persistent effect there, right? So this is always uh, an effect. So this is unique to the hero. Let me in read the, that so people know what I'm talking about. Well, you're looking in at the, the... Let's keep with the dwarf. So oh, yeah. I don't want to take the dwarf out uh, of there. Uh, you go. So what's okay, the dwarf so persistent what effect? What I'm looking at is in the player mat on the fourth card slot, pre-printed is a power that says, I'll distract him. Um, Grimmel is a plus one sword die on all attack rolls. Plus one die for attack rolls for all other heroes occupying the same tile. Okay, I see what you're saying. And then the exhaustion feature comes into play is as I play my cards and you I cover that up, that, that goes away. That goes away. Wow, right. that's that's a neat thing. Okay, right. So all there's right. so there's the components for that's so that's a good example of the heroes and the hero cards. Bonus for all heroes within two tiles. Okay, cool. So the next components you're going to see are some of the tiles. So here's one of the. Here's one of the Ooh. tiles. This is the starting tile that goes in the center of the table. Oh, yeah. What do you think these of that? Are, these are really nice. Yeah, these are high end. Yeah, really good. Uh, really so, good job, Russ. So what he's looking at here, and again, I, I got to give props to. Uh, I designed it. The concept's mine, but in terms of the art, yep, and the execution, it's all part of the team. And I could not be more impressed and proud with this team. Yeah. So you're looking it's at the fantastic. art. You can go describe the art here. It's got the stones in the dungeon. What are you looking at there? Yeah. So it's a nice 3D uh, looking tile. It looks like I'm seeing some bl- uh, blood red carpet going up some <laughs> stone steps to a door. Right. Uh, a couple torches. So, you know, yeah, definitely gives a nice dungeon feel. So as the heroes explore, that's the I, entrance. The tile. dungeon master might play this card. This is a hallway card, and what does it say down there? All right. First of all, you want to know that the hallway card's not a rectangular; it's a square. It's also square. All the time, uh, which I sense. like, because it, it, otherwise we get. Uh, I heard a new term um, <laughs> called uh, map gore. <laughs> map gore. Have you heard about that? I have not, but I want to use that now. <laughs> okay. Describe map gore. So Can this you is, define it for the listeners. <laughs> yes. So <laughs> map gore is a, a term I heard in Crusader Kings Three, the video game. Yes. And what that means is that as your kingdom, you start to be a kingdom, but then your vassals fight. And then all of a sudden, your kingdom will be like a little blue speck over here, five territories away, another blue speck, and then six territories away, another blue speck. So your kingdom is broken up by all these other yep. things, and that's called map gore. And they the people don't like that; they want their kingdom to be in one basic area. So, yep. so we got rid of map gore. Okay, um, this hallway shows some barrels, both up and down, and a little blue flavor or blue something. Barrels and crates. Models on the side, plus one die. Woo, to their defense pool. Okay. Right, so you can hide behind the barrel. So some of the hallways have persistent effects like this. Yep. So my models on this tile. So both bad guys and good guys uh, on this tile. I guess you're, it's a perspective, right? So yep. The Grim Dark Dungeon Master's forces, as well as the heroes, would get plus one defense right, dice. Show there. me two more and then we're going to play. Now, flip this tile over. So when you purge right. this tile, see what happens. When I purge it, Ooh, see oh, the big yellow arrow? Oh, there's a big... It looks green to me. Okay, it, well, it might be a little bit of green, yellow. Okay, and now you barrels can, and create. Oh, I, I still get the. Defense. You still get the perspective. But That's cool. When you flip this tile over, this big arrow, you as the as the hero player can choose which arrow this is going, which way this arrow is going to go, oh. which is going to be requiring where the grim dark dungeon master puts his thing. Okay, one more tile. Here's that force cage tile I mentioned earlier. Yep. And you'd have these in three piles. Yes, I'll show you how that works. You. Behind, okay. well, the Grim Dark Dungeon Master would. Yes. All right. Here's the Lightning Force Field. Looks like a um, rustling ring and some blood <laughs> on the stones. There's a blue border, and it says there's an eyeball, and it's in a square rectangle, and it says ready defense two. What's that mean? That means that when you try to purge this tile, it's going to get two blue defense dice to prevent the purge. Not all tiles ah, have defense dice okay. against purging. And this is called the force cage. When yep. you're in here, three red eyeball attacks against any model entering or leaving this tile. Right. So that means when everybody enters or leaves it, they're going to take a three red dice attack. And the eyeball means a type of attack because certain heroes get bonus defenses oh, okay. against certain types of attack. And as I mentioned before, when you purge this tile and you flip wait, wait, it over. question before we yeah, purge. Yeah. What do the eyeballs in the corners mean? Uh, it, it designates the type oh, that's of room. Just, that's just fun. That's oh, just flavor. Because okay. it is an eyeball room, okay. uh, which means arcane, basically. And these are just adding a little flavor text to it, okay. or flavor graphics. But when you flip it over, there's that teleportation oh, circle teleportation. I mentioned. Oh, and it says purged. Yep. So I didn't even, even have to ask this question, because I know you like it so much. Correct me if I'm wrong. The game can be completely played from all the components on the board. 
Yes. Right? All the rules are in front of in you. In fact... That's a big Russ Yes. In rule. fact, one of the things I insisted upon, and I got into some pretty good discussions with our manufacturing team on, is the next thing I'm going to show you. So, yes. they All the rules for the game are pretty much on the table, meaning the cards as you play them are the heroes, but also all the rules in the room, like the fact that the quarter tiles with barrels give you better defense. You don't have to look in the rule book for that. It's actually printed on the card, right? Uh, same with the teleportation circles. The other one is... So check this out, Rafe. We haven't looked at the minions yet. Here, oh, yeah, minions. Here is a skeletal Ooh. sword and shield. Oh, wow. And here is a skeletal... Here is a cultist. Oh. And here is a skeletal archer. Now, what are you noticing? I'm, I'm giving Rafe the acrylics. They look like the acrylic from the heroes, but now they're monsters. What do you notice looking at these, Rafe? Yep. We did... Um, well, first of all, I want to say Russ and I made an uh, artistic choice to do podcast and not do the video on purpose because we wanted to be able to describe the components to listeners who might not see video. So, um, yeah. So, really cool art again embedded in the acrylic. But on the base, there's all sorts of iconography. Iconography? How do you say that? Iconography. Iconography. So, like, this skeleton has a skull, a red sword, and two blue dice, which probably means something. Yes. So, what I wanted to have happen is I did not want a reference card where you'd have to go look up yeah. what the stats are for a skeletal warrior with a sword and shield versus the stats for a skeleton warrior with a bow versus what a cultist can do. Instead, there is... Um, and we went back and forth on this. So, I wanted the icons to be on the bases of the models. Whether they're the three-dimensional... You know, models you can paint, which will be one of the options for people who eventually get the game. You can you can have all these acrylics be real models instead, and I can show those to you too, Rafe. Oh, you can? Um, yep, they're right here. Jeez, you wouldn't even um, need to, in my opinion. Or, well, we wanted the game to be accessible for folks who don't like models. So these are all full-color acrylics. If you're a board gamer, you're ready to go. If you do want models and play this game with an awesome set of models that you painted yourself, that's an option that's for a nice you too. Feature. Okay. And both, whether it's the models or the acrylics, the icons are going to be on the bases. And initially, we were looking at making them stickers. But it looked like crap. And so I was like, look, if you can screen art onto the acrylics for the model's, you know, look, why can't we screen the icons onto the base? Makes sense uh, to me. And he's like, it's going to be more. And I'm like, yeah, but it's worth it for graphic design. So what ends up happening here is you don't have to know that a skeletal archer is different than a sword, than a skeleton with a sword and shield. All you got to do is look at their base. Mm -hmm. And what you're looking at for the sword and shield guy, Rafe, is first there's, there's an icon of a skull. And that tells you that this is an undead model. And certain characters yeah. have certain abilities that do more damage, do more dice against undead. So we're already, we've got his category. The next icon is red and it's a sword. The, the number of red icons tell you how many red dice this guy gets to roll when he attacks. And the type of the icon tells you whether it's a sword attack, meaning an adjacent, or if it's a bow, it tells you it can shoot down a corridor, right? And then the last things are some blue dice. You can see them here. You'll notice the guy with a sword and shield has two blue dice. And that's because he's got a shield, he's so he's two shield. defense. The archer only has one blue die, meaning he's easier to kill, but he can shoot down the quarter. So this guy can only attack people near you, the guy with the shield, but he's harder to kill. Mm -hmm. The archer, and when the Grimdark Dungeon Master spawns these guys, he can choose which of the two he wants to spawn, because the spawning room says, spawn skulls, right? So the skull icon tells you which you can spawn. Does that make sense? Uh. Meanwhile, the cultist over here, his icon looks like arcane. Where's it to? Oh, we're not in the spawning room. A we're not in the spawning room. Yeah, I can yep. show you a spawning room. Here yeah. we go. Here's a cultist spawning room. And what does that say, Rafe? Cultists at prayer, and it shows some like shields in a, in a pentagon or something. Yeah. Up to add up to two minions to this tile. Okay, and see this icon. So it's yeah. got to be minions got with this icon. Minion. So I could put two cultist minions on that tile, right? Yep. And at the dungeon master, I don't know what they do. There's a quick reference card that tells you the I, the red icon. Now the cultists have a red icon, looks like a little explosion. Yep. And that means they can attack everybody within two squares, all the models. They basically cast burning hands, essentially. So they fry everybody, and they only have one defense dice also. So this is making sense, Rafe? Yeah, here's another thing. It may, may seem really um, simple, but I like it. The icons tell me what they are. In other words, I don't yes. have half a moon, a star, <laughs> and a square. When I'm, right. and, and so, like, oh, it's dice, attack, defense, it's, and the monster. And, and the blue dice, by the way, I haven't shown you the, the dice yet. So the blue dice are literally blue dice. Right, and they're literally blue dice. Ooh, these are nice too. Okay. So and nice, so you can describe good, those. Nice, good quality. And the red dice. dice are literally red dice with swords on them. So yep. brilliant. So what you're seeing here is oh, okay, so this skeleton's gonna roll a red die. Now it's a it's a bow shaped red dice, so you know how far it's a type of attack he's making. Uh, and then you have the blue dice tell you the defense. 
Right? And does does the one bow mean I roll one? Yes, because how here, you, yeah, how do you does here it? is the main bad guy, uh, and you can see he's got a bunch of red icons. Okay. So, but here's the difference when so when you attack, okay. So if you had let's say three skeletal archers in the same square, you pick when you attack as a grim dark dungeon master, you select all the minions on the same tile mm -hmm. who have the same attack same type, type icon, and you roll those together. So if these two guys were going to attack, you get to roll two, two. red dice. And you attack any hero in a long line because they have bows. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. So let's talk about the dice. So yeah, 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 you guys really outdid yourselves when it came to the components. So like the dice are like the, um, the you know, so guys, I'm looking at shields and, and like the dice got one shield and two shields. But my point is it's got like the white inside. It's not even just one mm. little lip over. The quality is insane. Super great quality. Nice. Is it? They've got a good heft. I like. I like E. All right, Rafe, should we play? I do have one oh, critique. Yes. Yeah, please do. I would prefer total preference. Yeah, yeah, cool. I like the matte. These are shiny. Yep. I would like matte. Well, so some of the stretch goals are going to include different forms of custom dice. Ah, that will have... Perfect. That will have the icons that match certain heroes. So you can get like the Barbarian's Attack Dice and the Templar's Attack Dice and stuff probably. Okay. So you're saying you'd like to see dice of different types, like matte dice and I stuff like, like that. Okay. Yeah, but, Good feedback. I mean, but... <laughs> I mean, that's just redonkulous. All right. That's just awesome. a preference. Okay, let's play. All right. We're going to pause here, guys. Yep. I'm going to play the game with Rafe, and we'll let you know how that goes in a couple minutes. All right. We're back from a quick session. Uh, I don't know how long I'm going to take, Rafe. I don't even I think I timed it, but it, an, hour, like an hour, 45 minutes, 45 an, minutes. an hour. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and your daughter joined us. Yes. And me joined um, us. Uh, and before we played, we looked at the miniatures a little bit. So I yes. showed you some of the sample minion miniatures yes what do you think of the minion miniatures again just superior quality they're going to be really fun to paint um you know what's interesting though is i was thinking about them being on the clear base yeah because you're going to need that for the um icon how do you say that Icon the iconography I iconography but then also it's kind of fun to see through it the is dungeon. kind of fun to yeah, see yeah. through it so at first i was a little bit like oh would i be not like that they're on a clear base but i think they have to be for the game and i'd get over it in about 60 seconds so yeah. so but yeah no the miniatures are phenomenal so that's going to be fun although to be honest with you i wouldn't even feel the need that i would have to have them um the, the basic game components weren't such that i'm like oh well i want the upgrade they, yeah so, they, the, they so were, the, the acrylics were really you know, really beautiful. worked yeah they really so what do you think about me. the acrylics like on the table and play Fantastic. looking through the bases with the icons on that yeah cool i actually actually think i would play just with the acrylics really i right. think yeah, just because yeah. of the clear base thing yeah. I'm used to painting bases, you know what I mean? Oh, so not basing them could be a thing. Yeah, it could be. You could base them. You could base them and then you could just remember the icons or, you know, yeah. note it on the bases somehow. You could paint the icons maybe. on the edge of the base if you want. I was really about to say, fancy. like, maybe there'd be a way you to get really paint fancy. them on the edge. Yeah, it, it depends. People do all kinds of crazy stuff yeah, with yeah. models. So there'd be that. Okay. Um, so, okay, so we played our first game and uh, I really liked it in it, but I have to say that I had a juxtaposition between it was more beer and pretzel -y than I was imagining it but not, it's going to be weird but not because of the way you explained it because the components are so good <laughs> yeah that I was expecting a deeper uh, lengthier play experience right. but the play experience was very fun so I really like that you created a dungeon crawl game that's playable in an hour when you were telling me that, I was thinking, that's no. impossible. Right, right. But it was fun. And if anything, I did feel, uh, I played, again, two versus one. I felt like we were a little overpowered, uh, like because we kind of just ran down the dungeon yeah, yeah. and kept running away from you on the goal of making you flip tiles, which is right. part of the strategy. Right, right. But you then did share that you did have a couple GM moments where you could have... Definitely play, put us yeah, in a pinch. So it, so one of the challenges that makes me feel better demoing as the designer, right? You're like, well, I could do this to them, but that would be really rough. And I wanted to kind of give you the make sure you saw your options. Um, that makes me feel better that you shared that with yeah. me because at first I thought that wouldn't have been fun for the DM, right? But you shared that you did have some. Actually, places. I do like, and I, I I regret doing this. I usually I usually like have one of the first players be the dungeon master, the grim dark dungeon master, because it. Oh. It's a it's a different play style, and then I can be more aggressive as a hero because I think the Grim Dark Dungeon Master can be really, really powerful. Powerful, um, okay. and I shouldn't. I, but then I could tell you guys are both excited about the heroes, so I was just going to be the, excited be the dungeon about master. the heroes. Uh, yeah, uh, it was very fun to play with yeah, my yeah. hero. My hero felt like my hero. I liked uh, Emmy's hero. Was did super they feel different fun to play? Yeah, totally yeah, yeah. felt different. Uh, I loved 
I almost felt like the rest mechanic was maybe too powerful because we kept healing all of our wounds. Yeah. Um, but you said that that sometimes There's doesn't luck happen like that. So one of the things about the game that I that I I think is interesting, but it's important to think about when you first play is that because there's D sixes involved, there's a bit of luck. Um, but because it's so short, you can play quickly again. Yeah. So uh, what would be interesting is if you played again, you'd think you would find that that strategy just didn't work next time for whatever reason. It, oh. The dice didn't bounce that way or the tiles didn't come up in that order or the dungeon master just took a different angle. And so you guys, whenever you rested, you always healed. So for our listeners, as you take wounds, as I mentioned before, your cards go face down, which reduces your options as a hero. But when you rest... You first roll a blue die for each of your face down cards. If you get any shields, it turns face up. And at the end of the rest, you pick up all your face up cards. So if you get lucky, all your healing can come back. If you get unlucky, nothing can happen when you rest. Uh, and for both of you, every time you rest, you pretty much fully heal. Pretty much. There's a couple uh, times I did. And so it. that's that's not typical for a lot of people. So I've we played games where the heroes rest and they never they never heal up. Um, and I know for some people that that little bit of randomness could be frustrating, but I think it's interesting and adds yeah. some uh, some strategic decision making. You guys said you just recently made a decision for the blue trap rooms. Yes, that you can walk through and and take you a take wound. damage, but you don't. I yeah. think that's very wise. Yeah, because we did roll two to three times each, mm-hmm. and we could not get out. Yes, and that's not fun after a while. That's what I was worried about. So, so, so and that I was, was interesting. Smart. I, the other mistake I made as a dungeon master is I had I haven't played a lot since we made that change. And I think it's awesome, but I forgot that it didn't stop you as long. And so part of my strategy got foiled by the fact that those rooms don't stop you as much. And mm. you guys weren't as afraid to walk through those. Yeah. And talking to some of the playtesters, they still felt afraid to leave because <laughs> of the amount of attack damage it can do. Uh, and so I thought it was interesting that... Uh, yeah, we were just like yeah. right through the electrical yeah, yeah. field. <laughs> but we were healing like bosses, so we just had the belief that we you did heal. heal well. Yes, and, and 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 that got so I got you at one point I got you guys to half the wounds I needed to win. Yes, I think it was a mighty point where I had you at four out of six, which can be dangerous because there are there are villains for the bad guys that can attack multiple heroes. Yes, and so setting up the right situation can do can get a bunch of them at once. So I I was within striking distance a couple of times, but yeah. couldn't make it, couldn't convert it. And I want to be conscious too of this recording that people haven't played it yet, right? And we didn't do an official game review, right? Right. So I don't want to spend too much time because people will be like, "What the heck are they talking about?" <laughs> right. But I do want to give my overall impressions. And so, um, would I buy this game? I don't even know the price, but I would buy it. I would buy it just on the components alone, and I would buy it on the fact that I can play within an hour. So it's one of those, you know, so far without the campaign settings, which I actually want to dream with you about. Um, it, yeah, it would be fun. Beer and pretzels. I could see multiple play angles. I could see it be fun playing as a GM. I think you've got a real hit on your hands. I'm, I'm well, this sounds funny, but like I'm proud of you as like oh, a friend. For, as like a well, friend. I'm glad you like it. I, 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 and I think what's interesting about it is it's very extensible. So in the base game, you know, yeah. there's, there's three heroes and three different stacks of tiles. And you saw most of the possibilities in the game in that one play, but in the in the in the game found, we're going to have two more expansions, which are going to add two more stacks of tiles. So oh, wow. adds a lot more. Now you have to switch out one of your stacks. So instead of having cultists, for example, there might be wolves or something, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and that changes the play style. Maybe wolves are easier to kill, but they move faster, so they're harder to avoid. So if you do the trick you did with running down the quarters, I can be like, fine, I'm bringing the wolves next time, guys. Dodge this, you know. Uh, Different heroes, which will add different pros and cons for the hero players. Uh, and then, as you mentioned, some kind of campaign mode that we're thinking about, things like that to add depth and length to play for someone who wants a game to go to go longer. What I like about the fact that it plays, you know, one set of objectives in about an hour is you can make a campaign mode that now lasts three hours and maybe you level your characters up, but it's still a sitting. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's still a campaign you can play in one day as opposed to a campaign that you got to get back together every once a week for a month, you know? Um, yes, yes. And so I kind of like that aspect of the game. And uh, there will probably be future iterations that do more in-depth stuff. But I, I like starting with something that's hopefully fun but fast. Because you it's can always add definitely. depth to make things longer. Yes. It's hard to make things fun and fast sometimes. I'm going to look forward to I was surprised, too. I have to admit that the boss, it was mm-hmm. I rolled well. Yeah, yeah. And you didn't block as many shields. And I wasn't expecting the boss to go down as quickly. And I wasn't either. I was hoping he would live longer. We've had sessions where the boss won't die. You know, the boss really? keeps rolling three shields because it, it comes down to there is a little bit of dice. Uh, and um, I don't think it feels swingy necessarily. Um, what I like about it is you, as the dungeon master, the Grimdark dungeon master, you play more, you realize that these rooms you can reveal are very powerful, right? Because the, 
the boss you fought, the necromancer, he can cast a fireball any distance in a straight line down the dungeon, and he attacks all the heroes in the tile he hits. So if the heroes are grouped up, let's say there's three heroes in the game, you hit them, you can hit, you can wound all three heroes. That's half the wounds you need to win the game. So if the heroes in that situation are already wounded, you can one shot win win against the heroes. As the, as, but also, I, as I one shot it against it you. Just exactly. So once that guy's on the table, it's like terror for both sides. I have this ability to basically really mess you guys up, mm. but I am exposing myself to potential instant death. You know. Um, now there's tricks I can do. So for example, there are rooms that the, the barrel rooms that give the, the guy extra defense. So if I got to a barrel room with him, it would give him four defense dice. Oh, yeah. Of course, there are combos the heroes can get to reduce my defenses and enhance your attacks. Right. So the idea is you're trying to mitigate the luck, but in the end of the day, there's still dice involved and. You know, the Sometimes dice can, swing dice like can bounce your way. <laughs> it reminds um, me of uh, blowing up the Lehman Russ tank, right? It's still, it has a little bit of that, and, but but what I like about it is, unlike those games, that's a four-hour game, and you just had a big thing. This is like, oh, you got me. Let's play again. Yes. Yeah, can I be the Can I be the dwarf this time? You be the dungeon master. See how yeah. you do, you know? Yeah. Um, I think you've achieved that. And that's I what really I do. I am looking forward to what you will play with. Like, Maybe the boss will have two hit points. Because yeah. what it made me feel like wasn't that I got it down in, in one fell swoop. It was like, oh, my teammate. It would have been fun if I like wounded it. Yes. Took it down yeah, two yeah, yeah. shield dice or two attack dice. And then my teammates, they have to come in and go yeah. pow, pow. And I suppose the same way, too. If you can zorch everybody with a fireball, I'd like it where I'm a hero. So I can yeah. kind of live to maybe do yeah. the Hail Mary And I should have rolled better. Like it, the I rolled three blanks, right? And like... That's it's a one in three chance to get blanks. Yeah, I'm so. not even saying change it. I'm more yeah, yeah. saying I'm looking forward to the variant. You know, like in yeah, the back yeah, of a rule book, it'll say yeah. variant. Try this. Yeah. I'm looking forward to see what you come up with there. Just because I wasn't expecting it. Yeah. When when do you go up against a boss and you can kill it in one shot? Yep. I just wasn't expecting it. But I'm not yep. saying change it. Well, I, and, and and again, I, what I think is interesting is there's always that lucky chance, right? There's always yeah. a chance that the the you know the, the half one of the bow can win the day kind of thing and yeah and I want that element in the game to have those stories of like remember that time the the barbarian one shot at the, the the lich or whatever or the necromancer there'll be another game where you won't be able to kill him after four attacks and you'd be like what the heck's happening we can't stop this guy's yes. nuking us and you're like yeah remember that time that I just one shot at you and I told you, you should make it harder and now I'm like I can't kill that dude <laughs> now I can't kill him that. right so so I think there'll be some of that too because um, we should say this was one game. Yes. If we had played 10 games, I bet you I'd have a whole different review yeah. of that. But my first impression is fantastic. I think you guys hit it out of the park. It's going to be a lot of people are going to love the game. It's a lot of fun. And you have so much adaptability to go with it. It's it's incredible. Really. I'm glad you like it. And, and again, I hope people try it and, and give it a go. The, uh, the, the website, the Game Found, is live now. Our Facebook page is live now. So if you head over to... Uh, uh, GrimdarkDungeonMaster.com or you head over to GrimdarkGames.net uh, both those places will take you to the Game Pound page and you can learn all about it. And where do you happen to know where the next if they since it won't be produced right away do you know where it might be where they can try it out? Do you know what convention circuit you're on? Uh, we Well we're looking at all the upcoming conventions so we just finished at Nova um, and I don't know what the next ones are going to be yeah, at but we'll either. find out soon. Okay. Yeah, so we'll, where we'll can they, on, the, we're on the Facebook page? Keep an eye on our on, on the D6 Generation Twitter and Facebook. I'm sure we'll share it there. Okay. Uh, but also just follow us over at GrimDarkGames.net and you'll see what's going on. All right. Do you feel like there's any question I didn't ask you? Uh, no, Rafe. You actually nailed most everything. I'm, thank you for taking the time and planning it and everything yeah, because it was... Uh, obviously, it's a, lot of, it's a lot of work. But I, I think the, um, the thing I'm just most excited to see is do people like it? And, uh, and what do they think about it? Because that's the, that's the craziest part. Yeah. The whole thing. Yeah, I think I think you got yourself a hit on your hands. Oh, I'm I'm excited to see where it goes. All right, well, thanks, Rafe. We'll You're keep welcome. an eye on it. All right, all right. Till next time. Happy gaming. Achievement unlocked. You've made it to the end of another D6 generation episode the podcast whose humor has universally been acclaimed as not too horrible. Please let us know what you thought of the show by emailing us at info at the D six generation.com. If for some inexplicable reason you actually enjoyed this show, you can help others find out about it by leaving positive reviews on iTunes. Thanks for listening and happy gaming.